The obvious joke. What is there to say about the nothing phone one? Nothing, ha <laughs> video over. But the truth is, I've been using this one for about a week and I actually have a lot to say. Let's start by getting it opened up. Oh right, I forgot how their package works. You rip open the thing and you go like that and you get this which is your accessories, which is basically, ha, ah, nothing, ha, ah, yeah. A Type-C to Type-C cable, no charging brick. Thank you, Apple, for that industry trend, and thank you, nothing, for continuing it. Then on the other side, whoop, we've got the phone itself. There's a little SIM removal tool, very stylish. And really, that's gonna be your first impression of the Nothing Phone 1. These guys have taken the boring black brick, and they've really added something to it. I gravitated toward the white one, like, I think pretty much everyone else, but now that I've seen the black one in person, this is this is my first time, I might like it better. It's less flashy, but still unique enough that I'll probably still get comments on it. Boy, did I ever get a lot of comments on the Nothing phone. Just anytime I was using it, people were like, oh wow, what's that? So if you like something that is attention grabbing, I'd say the white one is the way to go. But if you want something that's cool, but more understated, the black one's super cool. On the back of every Nothing Phone One, you'll find their Glyph interface, which is a series of lights that can illuminate in different patterns for silent ringtones and notifications. Personally, I did not find it particularly useful. I am not a put my phone on the desk next to me and then watch out of the corner of my eye if it lights up kind of person. And I would have absolutely no hope whatsoever of remembering which particular flashing light pattern corresponds to which contact in my address book, but if nothing else, it's got style. You can also use them to light up your shot when you're recording videos. Other than that, I love the transparent glass back. You can see the charging coil for their Qi wireless charging. That goes up to 15 watts and does five watts of reverse wireless charging for your earphones or whatever else the case may be. And you can also see some ribbon cables, the camera module, and most of the rest of this I don't really recognize. Other than that, about it physically, there's not a whole lot to really say. Lock button on the right, volume on the left, great positioning for those. You're very unlikely to accidentally mash your volume buttons when you're trying to lock the phone, which I mean has been a frequent complaint for me over the years. On the bottom, you'll find Type-C charging, dual SIM, as well as a bottom speaker. It does have an amplified earpiece speaker, but from what I experienced, the stereo balance of it is extremely poor. So hopefully that's something that nothing can tune in Nothing OS, which is their skin for Android and something that I want to spend most of my time talking about. It's I bet from here, you guys can tell that it's all coming out of the right side. That's, that's actually quite an achievement. The last thing I do need to talk about physically though, is that whether you love or hate the ergonomics is pretty much gonna come down to whether you love or hate the ergonomics of an iPhone Max. <laughs> Notice any similarities, ladies and gentlemen? Nearly identical dimensions, even down to the thickness, to the point where I was coming back from lunch with Jake, who happens to have an iPhone 13 Pro Max, and he's like, wow, it feels so similar. I should take off my case, and we should put it on the nothing phone. <laughs> it fits like a glove. Obviously, you're not gonna have the same, you know, positions for the volume rocker and the lock button, so you wouldn't actually want to use this. You know, your top microphone for noise cancellation is not gonna be exposed but the freaking thing actually fits. Like it doesn't, you know, you gotta, you gotta work to get it out there. <laughs> I personally do not like the ergonomics of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but I'm also not a fan of the software. So let's talk about what nothing has done to make their Android skin stand out from the crowd. First of all, you've got your fingerprint and facial recognition, both of which work well, not to mention speedily. I do have one complaint. When you interact with a notification while the phone is locked by dragging it down, when you drag it back up, you're not prompted for a fingerprint unlock. Instead, you get a pin code, then you have to go back, then you have to go like this, which means that you're not actually gonna open up that notification you were trying to interact with. It's just little things like that that have irked me. Um, I don't like how much space my quick controls take up up here. I prefer a much higher density interface than what they've done here. Other little things, they're, and the interface for uh, turning your hotspot on and off, you have to kind of swipe to access it. That's something that I use a lot, and I would like to be able to just have be a, a one-touch 
turn on, turn off thing rather than opening up the menu. Overall, it seems like nothing has adopted what at least used to be the OnePlus approach to their software, where it's a pretty clean, mostly stock Android experience and with in my personal opinion, pretty nice style to it and not a lot of extra. That means you won't find any bloat. I haven't removed a single stock app from this phone. You can see there's just no random crap on here, but it also means that you might not get the same richness of experience that you would expect from other skin makers. And a perfect example of this is screenshotting. So let's take a quick screenshot here and I'm gonna go ahead and share this. Okay, that's a pretty normal looking share interface. No problems there. What if I wanted to edit it before I share it? Oh my God, I have to click a thing before I can crop it. Then, wait, well, what now? Save copy. I can't share it directly. I can't click this to open up my photos app. So now all of a sudden it's a tedious multi-step process to take a screenshot, crop it to whatever you want or draw on it, and then to send it to someone. We can compare this to Samsung for contrast. Nothing also has a similar scrolling capture feature, which is really cool. But here I can draw on it, quickly crop it, and my share menu is still there. It's definitely a better experience. We'll talk about software more in a moment because it's kind of the most important part of the phone. But first let's touch on the hardware. It's got a Snapdragon 778G Plus, which is about what most people will ever need. We are long past the point where flagship chipsets are actually necessary in a smartphone to have a good experience. You're able to record it up to 4K 30 with that chipset. You can play pretty much any game that you can throw at this thing. It supports a 120 Hertz variable refresh rate on its 1080 by 2400 6.55 inch display, which in my opinion is pretty much the sweet spot. If only it wasn't for these squared off freaking corners. It'll do 1200 nits peak brightness in HDR, which is about all that you're going to need. And I just didn't notice any kinds of slowdowns. I mean, slightly weird behavior in the animations. Sometimes when I drag up from the bottom with the gesture navigation, it's like, I don't know, a little bit weird sometimes because I'm, I'm really tempted to do it the iPhone way and kind of drag it in a J shape. You can see actually right now it's not even registering as telling me how to do it like I'm not an idiot. But that's just down to their animation design. It was never the smoothness of the interface of the phone. It's available with eight or 12 gigs of LPDDR5 memory and 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage, meaning that at the price, which is starting at 399 pounds and then it's 499 pounds at the high end. I mean, we might actually have, you know, a new OnePlus back. I mean, I guess that was kind of the point, right? I guess we should talk a little bit about nothing and where they came from. The founder, Carl Pei, was one of the founders of OnePlus. And if I had to guess, based on the direction OnePlus has gone since his departure, and my first experience with Nothing OS, with the, the Nothing Phone 1, I would say that he was the one who made OnePlus good. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be a hater or anything, but look at this. Double click to open the camera app. Freaked it. Obviously! The way Oppo does that, with the, 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 the draw, you draw a C on your off screen, it's, it's asinine. I would be open to nothing adding, you know, more options for quick launching the camera. I'm not saying that just because I prefer to double tap the lock button means that absolutely everyone should prefer that. I'm just saying that it's a lot quicker than basically anyone else's way of doing it, including Apple's. Like, okay, so I have to lift it up to wake and I long press this. No, I shouldn't have to look at the device. That should do it. Especially since it doesn't already do anything else. You're not even using it. Sorry, sorry, I got all angry again for a second. The haptics of the Nothing Phone 1 are outstanding. The iPhone actually reminded me of that because up until now, Apple was one of the only one to really get haptic motors right. Usually one of the first things that I do when I pick up an Android phone is turn off the vibration when I'm typing. But in this case, you can even just tell from the sound. It has a really nice, tight feeling to it. It doesn't feel like, like you guys know what I'm talking about, right? It's a very, a very Apple-like feel. And I'm surprised to find that in such a reasonably priced device. Since we're talking about the camera, the best thing I can really say about it is no complaints. 
you know, it really doesn't seem like whether we're talking screen color calibration or the camera, that nothing has overcooked anything. I don't know that they're necessarily delivering the absolute finest image quality in the market, but there was never a situation with the Nothing phone where I felt like, oh, this is really holding me back. And they've certainly got the hardware behind it. They're using a 50 megapixel Sony IMX 766 sensor for the main shooter. And then their wide is using a 50 megapixel Samsung JN1 sensor. You've got optical and electronic image stabilization on the main and then just electronic image stabilization on the wide, which is pretty much what you'd expect. Again, this is not a flagship tier phone with a flagship tier SOC and flagship trimmings. It's got a 60 megapixel IMX 471 in the hole punch camera, which I honestly didn't use. This will be the first selfie I'm taking with the nothing phone. Yeah, it's a little processed, um, not the greatest. Let's see if we can hold it a little more still. But studio lighting is kind of a best case scenario. Yeah, if you hold it still, it's good, but I don't think my hand's that shaky, is it? Do they not have slow-mo video capture? Oh, they do. 120, only 120 FPS though. Okay, I mean, it's little things like that that are just probably not built yet. The software updates for this thing are coming hard and heavy. So here are a few things that I found were just a little lacking, like screenshot sharing. The gesture controls are exactly what you'll be used to if you have an iPhone. I don't prefer them, but the reason that I'm using them is because I feel like I haven't really been given a choice. Unfortunately, Nothing OS does not give you the option to reverse your task switcher button and your back button. I prefer the Samsung orientation, which is back button here because I'm right-handed and I use the back button a lot more than I use the task switching button. Uh, so I would really, really like to see them fix that. For now, I'm stuck with gestures, which mostly work fine, except when they're annoying. Um, and they do annoy me a little bit. One, uh, nothing, excuse me, has not rounded the edge of their default screen protector here. So it's a, it's a little scrapey when you're sliding in from the top, sliding in from the side. Oh, credit for including a screen protector though. It uses Gorilla Glass on both front and back, has an included screen protector and that did come in handy. I actually dropped it on the pavement like an hour before we filmed this. It was in pristine condition, but it handled it like a champ. All it did was dent the aluminum frame a little bit. I've certainly had worse. <laughs> Another thing I'd like to see them work on, this would be super cool. Nobody else actually does this, but man, how cool would it be if your audio quick settings here allowed you to switch between Bluetooth devices? Like, what would you guys give to have quick access to switch between your car and your earpiece or your Bluetooth headphones or whatever else without digging into your Bluetooth menu. There you go, nothing. I know you guys are watching this video. There's an idea free of charge. I found some really cool stuff in the developer options. You can enable OEM unlocking just like that right in the interface. It'll tell you not just what your percentage of battery remaining is, but your time remaining. I actually found the battery life was quite excellent with its 4,500 milliamp hour battery and less than flagship chipset. This thing sips power and I was easily able to get through a full long day. Just as an experiment, I woke up one morning with only about 35% left because I hadn't charged it that night. Not that I had started at 100 the previous day, but I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna see how, you know, if I can get through the day with this. And in the maybe hour or so it spent in my little caddy in my car using Android Auto, charging a little bit, I was able to get through the day. So I'm pretty darn impressed. It wasn't a heavy use day, but it seems like they've done a pretty good job of just not filling this thing up with bloat, which is a big part of battery life. Now they pointed out this feature where you can interface with third-party devices here, experimental features like connect to Tesla and I don't have a Tesla, but apparently they also have a way to read AirPods battery life natively without needing like a third party hacky app. But that is not something that I have tried. I mean, let's see here. So what, do I just go into the settings? I don't know. I don't see anything about that. That was in their notes though, right? Could be something that they're adding down the road, but at any rate, it doesn't seem to do anything right now. There are a handful of other things I could talk about, but the bottom line I think is already pretty clear. For the price, honestly, it looks great 
And if they manage to stay true to their mission, which appears to be a nice, clean, non-bloated Android interface at a reasonable price with good enough hardware, maybe these guys actually have a future in spite of all of the, the naysayers out there. Naysayers like our sponsor, T-Brand. Since, as Dbrand puts it, basically nobody is gonna get their hands on the nothing phone, they wanted you to be able to get something, so they came up with this. A, <clears throat> a themed skin, a white stylized version of their teardown skin that um, if you can't get a nothing phone, which you may not be able to since they are not going to be available in North America at this point in time, will mean that you can at least get something. Thank you, Dbrand. You are truly an inspiration to us all. You are truly a blessing on this world and we as a people. Without Dbrand, my life would truly be empty and sorrowful. The Something Skin will be available on select devices at launch. You can get the full details over on Dbrand's website at the link down below. And you can also request your device, but just understand that they may or may not be able to accommodate it because it's not just as simple as taking nothing's thing, taking a picture of it and slapping it on here, they're actually mapping out the internal components of your particular phone and they're creating the skin out of that. So there is a fair bit more work involved. I hope you guys enjoyed this longer circuit inspired by the extra time that I got to spend with the Nothing Phone 1. And if anyone has a chance, I'd say it's probably them. Probably the same as what you'll be accustomed to if you use an iPhone. Whoa, hi!